Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video it is time to get ready for May. So, we have to finish cleaning out the pit. So there's a small bit of stuff there. Wash it out, probably get the jag in, swap heads, put in the mill and I think Father Phil wants to wash the mill before he puts it in. We also have to move some machinery that is out with the in beside the maze with our tractors and our trailers and be ready to rock and roll for tomorrow. But why am I making a maze video? Well we're because we've the pumpkin patches on going at the minute and we have an area at the top end of the field where you have to walk from the sunflowers through the maze into the pumpkins, we're gonna do maze viewing. So for anyone who wants to see us harvesting the maize tomorrow, Wednesday the 30th of October, there will be 20 spaces available um, on the website. So if you head in the description to Stuart Family Farm, for anyone who wants to come and watch us cut maize, will be cut open to start around 12 o'clock. They'll go on for four or five hours I'd say. Um, so yeah, it's just for anyone who wants to come, we're set up there. So for anyone who wants to get an ice cream or a coffee and see us cut the maize. It'll be five euro uh, booking fee and that's just per car load. Uh, it's the reason there's like 20 and that is purely because that's about all we can park in the car park. So that's that's our limiting factor. And also if you want you can get a pumpkin while you're here but that's not necessary. So yeah, it's just something we're doing, seeing what interest is in it. Because why not? Everything is really in place for it. So. I'm on the yard scraper now. There's peacocks. There's gas yucks around the yard. I'm just scraping everything down into the dung pit. So we'll try and get it spread maybe this evening the bit we gather. Keep the dung out of the yard until we can't keep it out of the yard anymore. Well, until, until we have to stop spreading the maze on the dead we keep it moving. So the jag is in the yard. The header is here, but before we go put on, Father Phil wants to give it a wash. So you're giving a full wash down? No, no. Or what are you planning on washing? The first thing you're washing the mill out. Now blow it down when we're finished cutting the maize. Uh, blow it down. Finished, yeah. That's what Father Phil wants to get at is in here. It's one step. Yeah, was open. Nice bit of dust in here. This is the mill here. So we have to take out the wedge, which that's the wedge there. So that's where the grass passes up through that and on up and out the spout. So the mill has to go in. It's basically two rollers and it crushes everything that goes through it so that it cracks all the grain, all the um, maize, corn and corns on the cob. It cracks all of them so that they are cracked and they can easier digestible for the cat. We always leave it in the harvester because it saves having to change it because changing it is a hoor of a job because we also have one for maize and we have one for whole crop and usually what we do when we want to change it get the digger and take it out through the grid on the top that opens up and you just chain in with the digger and then slew it out. Easy compared to going through this door. Co-pilot's in the cab ready to rock. <laughs> oh yeah, he's watching from seat and cover up. So, right, we're going to get this washed off. So, that is the har harvester washed. Rose is packing in the bowser now because we're finished with it. If anyone can give me a recommendation for a good power washer, maybe a heated power washer, or washing machinery, please let me know. We used to have a Karcher K4 and a K2. They're both broke on. We were using the Parkside, but Aldi's finest, or Lidl's finest, and it's given up the ghost. Bro's got to get 99, Heron, check tires, check that tips. That's all there is to be done with that. And then Father Phil's picking up the header, bring it over to the house and service up the mill, service up the head, check gearboxes, put it all together, make sure it spins, we're ready to go tomorrow. Pit is washed and finished. Uh, just a bit of yard scraping left to do. Um, so yeah, anyways, Wait, I take, get this off for Bro. Uh, no, uh, you and Jess will be drawn. 
Or, just in here. Just not here. She's oh. work. Oh. Mother. Uh, we'll figure it out. Try will be there. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll find staff somewhere. And now, that's the header on. We'll go over to the workshop now and we um, finish up. We'll get that service up with Father Phil. And um, yeah, one more trailer to saw how to. We'll pull out a trainer. Uh, the reason we use the hern and the trainer, we only need two to dry in because it's so close to the pit. But we use the trainer then because it's an easy trailer to pull behind the harvester for doing the opening rounds. That's all we need. So there's no need for putting on the cane and the hern. So we just need the hern and the trainer to move the lock machine. Peacocks again. See what the crack is. Drive forward a bit, bro. Ah, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Tip away, tip away. So the reason we tipped every time before you go out to cut silage you make sure your trailer tips and your wheels are pumped just in case you have a lack of oil in a tractor whoa you're good or if there's a bus pipe or something that just you didn't know about right let out yeah. right hi turn on the headland management use the uh, float so yeah Cain is ready, or Karen is ready. Let's go scrape up the stuff we took out of the harvester there. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, the 64A he'll go onto the trainer, and we're just leave this evening. His the final bit to be done 64A is just put on the new track rod ends. Once the new track rod ends are on, that tractor is ready to rock and roll out of workshop. So Lee will get that done this evening, and she'll be ready for tomorrow. So, what needs to be done? I should service the oil for a new pipe. So last year or the year before, I can't remember. It's last year. We're folding it up. <coughs> no, I don't know. So, put on the shaft, do you have four gearboxes to check? Like no. They used to be bright. Full bright. Yeah. Them discs. All the whole disc. And then yeah. we were cutting. Aye, that's, that, that was back in the day when there was maize grow, and nearly every farmer had a few acres of maize. Everybody had eight to ten acres of maize. Yeah. Near enough everybody. And just, yeah, Di, died to death with the cost. Well, completely disappeared. Died to death with the cost. So the knife, the knife <coughs> runs up Not that way, yeah. and then the what catches the stock, so your stock goes in there, and it's running that way as the knife runs the other way, and that's what helps cut it. Catches it, pulls it round into the centre. Spiral lady there throws it out of that and then into the centre and it all falls flat and lands on the top. That is 25 year old. 25 year old. Yeah, have it. 15 years. 15 years. I, that head was on the old harvester. Yeah. That's how that end of it works. And I'll just show you the mill and then I'm going back inside to move the machinery out of the out of the, from the maze, there's a couple of trailers and the more I left in in front of the maze because we're building at the shed all the extra parking space I had got caught up with building so then we had to start finding somewhere else to park stuff so anyways we come in here this is what does the crack in so you'll see the way that these are grooved so um, I'm trying to remember, is our roller, I don't think the mill is like that, the mill has small grooves but not these large aggressive grooves. And them grooves are for just being able to catch grain and then as it comes through the two mills kind of align themselves. Now there is, you can see there is space there so that does allow, but it's just, the gap is smaller than the size of a grain. So it comes through, them wheels will help catch it, teat it and pull it through and crack it and that's how it works so the wedge has to be taken out then you just wind that in and then the belts line up here so the belt must be on the shelf slip it on slip it on everything there's a lever there which you pull back which pulls the tension off or tension on so you can take on and off the belt so that's driven so yeah and that's right yeah so that's clean now washed out uh it's put back on the blower pipe and yeah so that's right we should it'll be an hour or two at that we almost have a tire knees pumping anyways i'm gonna go move machine move chair.
So, that's the header done, service up, greased, all done, shaft is on. The only issue we have is Faderford is going to get the pipes. You have me have one pipe to take off, and what happened, I cannot get him on the phone, so he's going to come back with the wrong bit. But there's a 90 degree end on it, coming out of a block, and um, it wrong. I, I was doing my damnedest to try and get it open without, because it just, I knew by it, it wasn't right. I just kept trying and trying and trying, and it just snapped. And that's it. So just giving it its pre-spin now before we get to the field, make sure that everything works. But how much we didn't get. Running pretty nice, there's no noise out of it. No squeaks or squawks out of it, so that's always a good sign. That's the harvest are ready for me tomorrow. Now all that's left is move some machinery and pull out the trainer trailer. That's that one done. 11 sixteenths. No. Oh. Yes, 13.85 still waiting to get a few bits put back into it. But we should have the 6480 out for tomorrow. Um, Lee will get it finished tonight. Or we could use the 7618. It wouldn't put any pressure to get that finished. But that all right? Also, Freeman was wondering, the blue car belongs to Liv's uh, brother and girlfriend are over visiting. So that's what that is. Anyways, we'll go get the other bits done. So we're just out here with the maze. And you will notice I'm brown. So we're in the lower half of the field, which has been affected by frost we had two weeks ago ish or that. Um, and we're also, these runs here are the ones that was under the plastic. I can see just remnants of it there on the ground. And, and this row here now, you will notice the further down it goes, the higher it gets. But we have some of our algae variety with the red grain in it. And just to break it off. So it's pretty decent, we'll show tomorrow, or we'll show in the maze video how it's getting on, but it's actually looking not too bad. It's looking ripe, ripe enough. Not not wild hard, but still hard enough now. It's a bit of juice in it, that's what, yeah, see, it's still a bit of juice in it. That's what we're afraid of, just not far enough on. We go down the road here, so we're just on the headland. You know, we're still looking at quite a tall crop. It's done pretty good for all things considered for the year that's in it. We're averaging two cab cobs per plant, and most cobs seem to be have filled or there's grain in them. They're not white with no grain. So we're expecting maybe a slight bit less than what we had last year, but still a pretty decent amount of stuff off it. The only issue we think we could run into, uh, this end of the field has died off the top end of the field is still much greener and we're we won't know till we really get into it but we're expecting a certain level of moisture a lower dry matter than what you'd kind of be after when you go cutting maize so that leaves a question about losing nutrients out of the pit so our plan in here currently let me know in the comments below what you think or what you've done before for the issue but we're thinking of blowing three or four bales of straw into the base of the silage or the maize pit now we do have gullies and that will will catch it that does come out but the thing is that's all lost nutrients it's lost starch it's lost feed value so we want to keep it in there <coughs> and we're thinking if we put in some straw the straw will help soak it up also with the bottom third or quarter of the field being quite dead and it's actually way worse down the other end of the field where there wasn't the hedging for shelter it's way more burnt off with the frost than where we just were that could provide soakage for the rest it's, it's hard to know we won't really know until we get into it but we are expecting that could be an issue and that's what we're thinking we may do to solve a problem if anyone knows anyone who's cut maize at the minute and is having that issue what are you doing do you think it'll work also we may leave the 27.25 on straw blower on standby in the beat pit 
to blow straw in and through the pit as we are putting it in if we think it's coming in too rank. Now the problem you may be saying to yourself why don't we leave it till it ripens in. The harsh reality of it is it could be weeks more ripening in. Maize has like a gauge or a clock on when it ripens and it takes a certain amount of accumulative temperature to reach ripeness. So let's say for argument's sake it takes 3000 accumulative degrees of heat to ripen but you get that in three months or 12 months that's how long it roughly takes to ripen so because it's now winter it's cooling off we will not get that temperature to try and really it's just be terrible slow for ripening in and because the bottom third of the field or quarter of the field is dead in the space of another week or so we'll probably start to see crops starting to fall and falling off you can can't see it there but the other end the cobs are well hung now at the minute so we want to get it off the field before we lose that end of the field and yeah it's not ideal but ground conditions should be pretty good and that's just what we're doing we may be right we may be wrong i don't know let me know in the comments how's everyone else's maize harvest coming or looking it's just a cold summer and it wasn't under plastic is way behind that's just the highs and lows of it but that's what we're thinking of doing to try and leave try and solve a problem that we may or may not have with like we're just not going to we get into it but it's best be prepared or as best as we can be prepared for it one last thing that we'll be doing this year that'll be different from other years we're going to try to use this machine to push up the maze or well we are going to use this machine to push up the maze we use the bucket we have for it and we'll see how it goes quite interested to see how it'll work now the veneery was at done it's dirty and yeah we're just gonna try this because it's just for the crack like i just want to see what it's like because if this machine turns out to be you know half decent at pushing up we may look at buying a, a second hand folding book rake for the veneery that we could use the book rake that we have on this to as a second machine on a pit if needed we kind of need one when we're at our own silage because the pit's so big and we have two customers where it may come in handy and we also have a customer whose pit is quite a bit on the awkward side where this could be an easier machine to push up with than the veneering this is a little bit bigger so yeah i'm trying to find the trainer trailers right, one trainer trailer to figure out where they were left i think they're down at the back of the service so yeah that's the thing we'll just have the trainer on the alley. Bring it over to the house and pump the tires on it. One fat tire on it, anyways, on the back, or a very, very soft tire. Anyways. So I just love the hitch in this machine. Could actually draw silage with this. How good it would be? Probably not very, because uh, of the transmission tech that's in it. Wouldn't have the torque for pulling, but we have used the telly for tipping. Uh, grain. We brought beans back um, from rolling for feeding to the cattle and it was left in a shed and then I picked it up with this. You just plug out the pipe for the hitch and you have one auxiliary there and you're to tip a trailer. It's quite funny tipping a trailer on teleporter. The only thing is there's not so much to say as there's a full fillet and dial back down so when you push it, the lever the other way till I come back down you can kind of feel it pumping again it's like that probably doing drawback but maybe there's something on it that I'm missing that would allow it to do what I want it to do but yeah uh, so we take this over to the workshop and we um, can pump tires on and then she's ready to go and we just have to decide whether we're going to 7618 which is to my right or the 6480 when they gets it finished this evening provided we don't find any other issues with it when we're doing the uh, track rod ends and that's the tires pumped we're at the gap and we are ready basically ready to go tomorrow so yeah let me know in the comments down below what you think of the few things I said about the pit and there was something else to say about how I've forgotten now that is my biggest problem at the minute constantly repeating myself because I can't remember what I did say or didn't say and also if you're interested in coming down tomorrow to see us cut the maze I know not a lot of notice but we only have 20 car spaces available so look at people are interested people are interested if they're not they're not pumpkin patches on you all come and get pumpkin as well it's just kind of see how it works so anyways I'm going to drop this trailer and um, spread up cattle for the evening 
and yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Thursday's video, we'll be back to the workshop. See how the 3095 is coming on and finishing up 6480. And then Sunday will be the main video. So yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. That's it from me and my squeaky C in the JCB. Good luck.